In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a sky replacement. And we're actually starting with a pretty difficult image here because we've got it's pretty bright and saturated at the top because of the time of the day. And down here in the shadows, it's very dark. So this is actually going to be uh, a lot more difficult to make this look realistic than your average photo. So we're starting with a more difficult one. And if we can make this work, we'll make anything work, right? All right, so here we go. We've got a, a kind of a cloudless day in New York, which is uh, a little rarer at certain times of the year. But what we want to do is actually get some clouds in here. We want to put a more interesting sky in. Because if you look at the sky, it's kind of plain, and it's, it's, it's just kind of boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Quick Selection tool here. And with the Quick Selection, we're just going to click and drag across the photograph and just select the areas. Now, you know, depending on the photograph you're working with, you may need to uh, play around with it and tweak it a little bit more. It may be simpler or uh, more difficult. And in this case, too, we've got some areas in here that actually need a little refining. So let me grab my selection tool here. And I'm probably getting a little overboard here, but I'm just going to just gently touch in there and make sure I've got all those areas of sky selected. All right, so there we go. Once you've done that, what we want to do is we want to actually play around with these selections here and get them a little bit more accurate. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Refine Edge tool. And with the Quick Selection, if you find that the Refine Edge isn't showing, uh, just go grab one of these tools here. It could be any, any one of the selection tools here. And then just click Refine Edge. And this is showing it here. Um, although there was one thing I didn't actually want to do. Let me just cancel that for a second. And what I want to do is actually inverse the selection because we've selected the sky, but I actually want to select everything else. So I'm going to hit Command Shift I for Select Inversion, or you could go under here. I'll show you where it's in the menu. It's under Select Inverse. Okay, so there we go. And that would be Control Shift I on Windows. So we've selected our buildings. Now let's go back to our Refine Edge. And we want to look at it against some different things. Let's look at it against a black. And notice we've got some rough white edges there. Those are not good. Those are going to show up. Let's look at it on white. And white looks a little better, but we've still got some grungy edges. So let's have a look at black, which shows the problems more. And that's a good way of viewing it. Because if we make it look good in black, it'll look good everywhere. So what we're going to do is just increase the radius a little bit. And notice as I do that, it just makes things change a lot because this uh, enables it to uh, detect these edges a little bit better. So then we're just going to play around. I'm just going to give it a little bit of smoothening there. And if you want to see what it looks like again, don't be afraid to check it against white as well. So we're going to check it against blacks, looking pretty good. And maybe just give it a little contrast there on those edges. And that's actually not bad. It's looking pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to output, change the output here to new layer with layer mask. So we're going to output this, and this is new in CS5, the uh, layer with the layer mask. If you're working with a newer version of Photoshop, uh, sorry, an older version of Photoshop, then just make the selection, you know, the best way you can. And um, and you can use Refine Edge in CS4. You're just going to have to create the layer yourself. So click OK. And here we go. We've got our full image here. And here we've got it with a mask. So that works pretty good. And like I said, if you're using a newer version, just use you know whatever selection tools you have available to cut out the background and pop this on a new layer with a mask. So now we're going to take the clouds. We've got clouds over here. Let me just click like this so we can see both of them. See that? So if you're working with um, your window like this, just simply grab your clouds and then click on the tab here. Hold the Shift key and that will center it and then release it. So there we go, we've got that sitting on top. Drag it down underneath. All right, so we've got the beginnings of a photograph here. It's, it's not looking perfect, there's a few problems here. One of the things is, if you look at the clouds here, it just looks very, very fake. And the reason it looks fake is because with the city, we're going into the distance here, and there's also going to be a little bit of uh, smog and different things happen, atmospheric effects, so we need this to fade in. So we're going to create a new layer just above there, and I'm going to choose white as a foreground color. Grab the gradient tool. Make sure we've got it set to linear gradient. And then we're going to go to the foreground to transparent. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to click and drag up a little bit here and release it. And if you don't like it, you could try here and drag it up a little higher uh, or just undo it. 
a couple of times if you want to just have it shorter like that just play around with that so I'm gonna actually go about here and then what we're doing here is we're actually fading it into the haze and the atmosphere and uh, you know we can drop the opacity down a little bit doesn't have to be that strong and if you look at that you know that already adds a lot more realism because when you look at the buildings and you see this dark sky down here it just doesn't re look realistic so we can do it that way and depending on the time of the day you can con command I or control I and invert that into a darker color but let me um, convert it here because I want this lighter color. So we're looking a lot better. But one of the things that still doesn't quite match, if you look, and that's because we've got this huge saturation going on here in these buildings because of the way the sun's hitting them. In the background here, there's these clouds I shot somewhere else, and it's not quite as saturated. So we've got a choice. We can either slightly desaturate these buildings or we can saturate the sky a little bit more to match. So let's have a look at a little bit, just really quick at both. I'm just going to show you here. I'm selecting that, and I'm just going to shift to Command U. I actually just Command U, and that would be Control U on Windows for Hue Saturation. We're not going to do this yet, but I just want to show it. If we reduce the saturation on the building, see that? It matches a lot better. If I'm going to cancel, because it, it kind of takes away from the photograph a little bit. I like these strong colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our guy here, our clouds, and then we're going to grab a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. Then with the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer, I'm going to increase the saturation in the clouds, give them more color, and see how now they're starting to match the buildings a little bit better. And that's giving us our nice cloud effect. So if we look at that, let's have a look at this. Um, here we are before, just a very, very kind of dead, boring sky, and then after we're able to add these different types of effects. Now, one of the things I like to do too is I like when I see a good cloudy sky like I did here, I like to photograph those cloudy skies and actually build a library of clouds. Um, you know, for different photographs, some clouds are going to suit better than others. Uh, you, you know, you like to have some stormy clouds. In this case, I've got some nice sunset clouds. Um, so just capture a library of different skies when you see them with your camera and then just store them because you never know when they're going to come in handy. For example, here, you know, we're able to take these clouds and just drop it in and makes the photograph a little bit more interesting. And, and if you feel it's just, you know, too much here too, you can also fade these back a little bit. There we go. I'm just pulling the opacity back with the original layer showing underneath. And I can fade those clouds back a little bit if you just feel that they're too strong. Or we can put them all the way up. So it's really up to you. You have that flexibility to play around and make this look very, very realistic.